Good morning. This is a very strange morning for me. What's happening? That Airbnb guys, they're really annoying. That second one, which I already applied for and paid for, he not just denied as the first one, he just didn't reply at all. The Airbnb will refund me, but it can take again something like five business days, one week for my money to get back which is not pleasant when they do it twice in a row <laughs> and you don't get where to sleep so basically I have nowhere to sleep and I have quite a little money so welcome to my hobo world again but this time I have decided to do the hobo procedures <laughs> in a different place to make life a little bit more interesting and a little bit less sad. <laughs> what I will do... I was thinking already about doing it last time when I was here before trying to go to Pakistan. But I had quite a few things to attend in my business. So I needed internet and I was quite busy and because of that I didn't do it. I stayed in Muscat all the time. The idea is to go to the big sand desert uh, to a place called Bidia, Al Bidia. And from there it is literally on the side of the village where the big endless sand dunes begin. And they also have loads of camps like in Wadi Rum, which you probably saw already if you watched my videos. If not, I can recommend you. This was amazing place in Wadi Rum, in Bedouin camp. So there, they have many camps as well. But they are crazily expensive. 100 or a couple hundred euros per night. So out of question completely but I was thinking can I do my hobo exercises in the sand dunes? I shouldn't need any mattress or even a hammock there I can just sleep in the sand there is no rains in the forecast only problem is that in the forecast it says Yesterday it said 8 degrees during night and today it said 9 degrees during night. Hopefully today evening, which I will never see because I won't have internet, they will say 10 degrees. <laughs> but we don't know. So, yeah, it might be a bit cold. I will probably uh, put on everything I have and maybe I'll need to dig myself a little bit into the sand, which should be warm. And that way to survive the night. That probably might be an issue. But other than that, it should be very beautiful and nice. And we'll see. Maybe we even find some deserted house, derelict or yard or whatever with a stone wall. Uh, on the south facing side of which we can find some little bit remnant of the heat from the previous days we'll see we'll see but yeah my plan is that I'm going to Bidia I went to a scouting expedition yesterday here to find out where and how I can get a bus. There's only one bus per day. It leaves 8 in the morning. Something like in half hour's time. 25 minutes maybe. And it comes back uh, late, quite late in the evening. And it comes from this bus station, not the other one which we were and it's very conveniently near my new hotel 
but when I come back I already reserved for one night the second last night a different hotel which was the cheapest by that time which will be close to Ruby station so but why did I say it is weird and strange morning for me because I am leaving the civilization for two days I have already a good bunch of food and water four liters basically everything I need just in case I can't find any shop even there in Bidia which theoretically I should but I'm not too sure and I don't want to risk so I better carry these things and uh, there will be no internet of course and no electricity just sand dunes and uh, what makes this thing even more tricky is that during last two days the situation in my business rapidly deteriorated uh, and <laughs> I don't know what will happen during those two days where I will not have internet on one hand it is crazy I should abort this expedition and, and stay where the internet is to be able to react on things on the other hand I was thinking in reality what can I react what can I do everything I was able to do I did already and no matter what happens during those two days it is very little basically nothing I can do if we go belly up we will go belly up there is no more like I was trying to predict all kinds of things which could happen and uh, in which cases I could save situation if I have internet but there's nothing really so yeah I have done what I could be doing and during the next two days I can't predict any situation where I would have saved something we will either survive or we go belly up and we'll see what happens it is a bit weird to go away from civilization and internet on su such moment but I was thinking 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 about it a long time and yeah I couldn't think of any idea what could I do else if I stayed at internet so maybe in that way it's even better for me to go out of the reach of civilization to worry less because I can't do anything anyway what I could do I did so this is the big bus station which doesn't look too big to me <laughs> Good morning. Uh, Can I get a ticket for number 55 to Bidia? Yeah, to Bidia? Bidia, yes. Uh, day 25? Uh, today. today. Today, yes. And is it possible to get return ticket for tomorrow uh, back? I go today there and tomorrow I come back. It is the bus which goes to Sur. Yes. Uh -huh. The man told me to wait here. And the bus should come there. I was asking if this is the one and the other man said no. It's to Ibri, but... Uh, this one, Sur. Okay, shukran. So he did say this is... Uh, uh, Bidia, Sur. That bus. Shukran. <laughs> okay. Shukran, shukran.
so this goes to Sur. Yes, it's even written. That man came to uh, took my ticket and said, Ask the driver about parking, yes? Yes. About return from there, tell him where uh, I can with bus. Yes, good. I, I will, yeah. yeah. From where? Uh, from Latvia. Russia. Latvia. Uh, Latvia. It is near Russia. Uh, Arabian and Etihad Soviet. After finishing Etihad Soviet, coming to Russia. After Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, like that. Big, big country before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. Uzbekistan, Uzbekistan. Big country and uh, also different, strong, or different like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was long time ago. After coming to America, coming to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good, good country. Too much there, cold. Cold, very cold. Buried. Buried. Can you speak Arabic? What are you doing there? Uh, I want to see the desert, the, the big desert. dunes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. <laughs> yes. So all seems to be good. He came and he asked my ticket and he wrote something in the ticket. Yeah, something about CO1 and CO2 endorsement and restrictions and whatever. Probably it doesn't matter. Maybe he was afraid that that information will go somewhere further since I'm a foreigner and I might retain the ticket. Who knows? But it doesn't seem to be anything with me. So yeah, the driver said it goes to Bidia and I'll just have to confirm which place should I wait for return bus because there's only one bus. If I miss it, there's no way to get back on that day. <laughs> Next day is only a possibility. One bus per day. Yep, will be interesting, my friends. This is how the ticket looks. I can read the dates and times. Destinations is only in Arabic <laughs> and handwritten which is even more difficult to read I am coming back tomorrow from Bidia okay. it's all good yeah will you be uh, with me. you will be the driver yes, tomorrow yes, as well yes, yes. oh good that's good When I get out in Bidia, will it be the same stop where I catch the bus uh, return? Ah, yes, I will show you. When You'll I show there, yeah, okay. I will show you and I will tell you what the time. Perfect, thank yeah. you so much. You're Shukran. So, looks like I am the only one here in this bus. And he said I should sit. Oh, we have chargers here. That's cool. That's very good because then I will be able to use my phone for the maps and everything else without worrying to save my battery power because I have two days now without electricity
it looks like it is kind of oasis situation when they have more moisture, more water in this valley so it's more green as you saw around on the way to here it was very deserty but still they had these scattered trees very drought resistant trees but here of course there are many irrigated stuff growing as well so we are having 10 minutes break here in Ibra oh it's quite hot outside and the bus is air conditioned Yeah, it's interesting that their cities and towns, they're not concentrated in one place. They're very scattered. Like here, you, you might have impression that there is nothing here. But it's quite a big city actually. It's just scattered between these mountains. We were driving long distance through this city. The bus driver said that if I want a toilet, it's in that restaurant here. Let's go and see. Oman flag. There is one properly cool thing. Can I show you? The restaurant, how is it organized? They don't have tables they have stables <laughs> i don't know how do you call them i'll try to show you did you see that they have uh, different sections numbered and they just sit on the floor and eat on the floor that's obviously their traditional way of dealing with things at their homes when they sit on the floor they live on the floor basically and they have their food on the floor but it's the first time I saw a restaurant uh, where it is deliberately made to be sitting on the floor not having the tables and chairs <laughs> that's cool i never saw that thing it's just a different way how you eat and what's in your culture how you organize things that was cool i liked it Uh, boss, 
Yes. You have to be here. The uh -huh. the 420. 420 tomorrow. Yes, Shukran tomorrow. Jazeelan. So see you tomorrow. Thank you. Nice. We have found the place. So that's our bus. And that's the place tomorrow I have to be here. <laughs> So that is the town of Bidia, and actually it is quite civilized. I would have no problems of stocking up with food and anything I need here. I just didn't know it. That's why I bought everything already in there, uh, in Muscat, in the capital, just to be safe. Always better to be safe than sorry. <laughs> because I thought maybe it will be just few homes here on the map there was one shop small shop shown in this place only and it could easily be closed five years ago so I was say staying on the safe side and getting everything from Muscat it wasn't difficult So yes, welcome to the Hobo Land for me, <laughs> not for them. Let's walk slowly towards the desert. It's quite hot. And let's see what we find there and what we find on the way. Look at these doors. Nice. And uh, yeah, we'll see where, where we find a good place for camping overnight. <laughs> First time I'll be trying to sleep in the desert sand without any tent or any uh, anywhere to hang my hammock. Well, first time in desert anyway, even with tent. <laughs> I was in Jordan in Wadi Ram in the Bedouin camp there uh, you probably saw it in my video already if not you might you might want to see it it was quite a nice place but that was different that was in an organized camp with all the all amenities here will be just sand for me, nothing else. <laughs> uh, we'll see, friends, how it will go. Let's hope for the best and be ready for the worst. And that should get us through. What do you think? Okay, Al Muntarib Fort is this one. I saw it on the map. So here are some signs even sh uh, towards Sharkia Sands Camp. One of those expensive places where I could stay in Sharkia Sands. That's the name of the desert, Sharkia Sands. Castle is closed for maintenance. Okay. I wonder how many years or decades the maintenance last. But in any case. No worries about that. The people are very nice. Uh, one of those cars, the man, the passenger, uh, opened the door just to say hello to me <laughs> without stopping. And you see, you can sell things like this as well. You see, there is even such a thing as Bidia Museum. I wonder what's that and how much that, that costs. And that's the same castle from the other side. What a nice entrance into your house. It's not even a house, it's an entrance into yard. Or that part maybe is house. I like it. So we're slowly moving towards the edge of the town. 
it's not so central looking anymore and here we have a nice mosque ah, people are very friendly here many people are greeting me and with a happy smile and hello hello welcome <laughs> Seems to be a nice place, at least the first impression is very good. And also it looks like they are not wearing masks. At least in cars nobody is wearing masks. Let me go to the shop and see if they wear masks there. Because that would be a good litmus paper for me. If they don't I could free myself from that observance as well. Yeah, looks like it's good. I saw four or five men. One of them had mask only. Oh, and there we see two camels there. Can you see them as well? Cool. I like it. Shall we go a little bit closer to camels? It's not exactly my direction. I should be going more towards left of this building. But it's not too far and I have a lot of time. I have to be at my bus stop tomorrow evening and now it is something half past 11, 12 o'clock maybe. It took, took us almost four hours to get here with the bus. Three hours and 45 minutes or something. So I have one and a half day. I can afford to go to Camel just to see how it looks. What do you think? As they say in Afghanistan, you might have all the watches, but we have all the time in the world. <laughs> So now I have all the time for two days and one night. What do you think camels? Oh, they're beautiful. I wonder, is it okay to go close to them or would I annoy somebody, the owner I mean? And they don't even have tied front legs. Amazing. They are beautiful. Uh, what is this about camels which draws me to them? They are amazing animals. Yes, friend, I'm talking about you. You look good. And you too. Yes. I'm slowly eating some straw from the sand. Which was probably carried here for them. But yeah, they don't even have the bells or the tr tied front legs. Probably they just don't want to run away from the owner. Amazing animals, amazing. And there, my friends, I don't know, can you see that far? Is the first sand dune, the mountain of sand. We still have a while to go, but I can see them in the distance as well. And from there on, it is just big dunes and nothing else, as far as the eye can see, for many, many kilometers. So that is the direction which we came from, Vidya. And there's some hangouts there. People are listening music and having some rest. And that's the way I'm going to. And I don't know if you can see, there is the oasis. I saw it on Google map. Obviously some lower place where there's enough moisture for growing stuff. So there's a nice oasis. But all around it is just desert. Let's go there! Salam! 
I noticed one fence like paddock with camels there and you know guys I wouldn't be I probably if I would just go straight where I have to go and not go and say hi to these guys <laughs> my friends look at these friends wow you're so cute <laughs> Amazing, amazing. And there are two young ones as well. I have never seen young small baby camel in my life. Only in pictures and videos. Amazing. Let's stick my hand there so you don't have any bars. That's so cool. that small baby camel reminds me of llamas and they are relatives actually I read even that there are some crossbreeds between camels and llamas I don't know if it's true or it's just a myth but the uh, internet says it at least well you're coming to say hi <laughs> do you speak English? you cool guy Oh, you are amazing. How can one not like you? <laughs> That's cool. These are some cool guys. You are such a legend, my friend. Amazing. <laughs> yes, my friend. If you think I have something edible, then not really. I might save some mandarin peels for you. I heard that you like these things. Is it true? Friends. But you won't reply to me that way. <laughs> but I don't know if that would be okay to feed them my, my orange peels or mandarin peels because who knows maybe the owners wouldn't be happy about such things and what about you guys i wanted to say hi to you as well <laughs> yes oh, you're such a cute nice person <laughs> How not to like you guys? Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Ah, and this one has tired front legs. Are you the most aggressive one? Yes, I'm talking to you. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's cool. He's very curly. Others were not so curly. Yeah? Is it true? <laughs> oh, don't hurt your eye. <laughs> well, I can understand why Arabs uh, have in their language camel and beauty of the same root. They are beauties. And especially, I can imagine, if you live in a desert uh, many centuries ago before any technologies, then what camels can provide to you and do to you is so valuable that you are feeling deeply indebted and grateful to them in every respect. Like, they carry things they can go without water for a long long time especially if they have anything green to eat they can go completely without water for very long times almost indefinitely if they have a green food if it's dry food they need water but still they can go very long time without water and at the same time they can produce milk which you can drink 
and they produce these droppings which when dried which in desert happens very quickly are very good fuel for fire you can make fire and heat yourself and make prepare food uh, at the evening at the camp and they give you a wool which is very good insulation properties and all these things so i can imagine how deeply grateful you can feel if you're traveling with camels plus they're so beautiful and so cool and so calm look at these eyes <laughs> Yeah, of course camel and beauty should come from the same root, from the same word. Is that a question even? <laughs> I'm watching how this mother is picking up with her lips uh, the straw from... Oh yes, you can talk. Dear little friend. Okay, yes, nice. And he has very big eyes. I saw one video where one camelier explained if a camel such big eyes, and I mean big in terms of widened, it means they're scared. And if they feel scared, they might protect themselves, so beat you. <laughs> so beware. Uh, but I have fence between him and me, and he is a small guy. The big one wasn't scared. But uh, uh, yes, yes. <laughs> he was probably saying, "What is this foreigner doing here? What's going on here? Nobody comes here normally." <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're scared, but you want to come. Yes, friend. I was moving a little bit away from the fence, uh, just in case he would want to bite me. But he got afraid and walked away. He's interested in me. But he's scared at the same time. So I can maybe stand this far so he couldn't reach me. And then I don't have to jump away and scare him. And there, that guy is having his breakfast from the mother, you see? It's not the right angle to see, but it's there. <laughs> Can you hear these sounds? I should maybe take out the microphone. Now you might hear it better uh, if he will make these sounds again, of course. It's funny how they talk to each other. These are two moms with their kids. trying to eat. And look at what that guy is doing. He's eating that pole. You see how that pole is already eaten almost? <laughs> how thin it is in that place where he was eating it. Yes, I'm talking about you, friend. Show me. Yes, this is exactly what I wanted to see. Oh, he has some teeth. But yeah, I read that you can give old baskets and mats to them and they would eat them and it would be a treat for them. So they can chew a lot of woody stuff and feel very good about it. 
Yes, I'm talking about you, friend. I'm admiring your skills and abilities, which you have and I don't. It's so cool. <laughs> he likes to chew in that place. You see how thin is that pole in that place. <laughs> That's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, it would be nice to spend a long time together with these guys, but I think I will go. I want to get to that oasis and behind that is an old village and behind that are all the dunes. This is some cool village in oasis in the mid-desert. I can hear roosters singing, village life going on. Yeah, you want to park in the shade here. You don't want to cook your car. <laughs> That's where I came from. And here, this seems to be this village's central football stadium. You can watch all the big games being played here. <laughs> nice. What a cute place. Somebody's burning something there. And these are the villagers' houses. Quite a big traffic here. But I guess it might be because this road is going through to the, all the camps to the desert with all the tourists and provisions the tourists need and so on. That's why so many new jeeps are going through this village. I don't think it's because of the village itself. What do you think? Well, you have such an instructions when you arrive here. And it's uh, of, of all the things which, which were, mo most of them were quite uh, obvious and normal. But two things were which I was surprised. One thing, I shouldn't be climbing the sand hills overlooking the village. Would that be kind of intrusion into their privacy? Maybe. And another thing was that I should report to somebody here who would drive me to the camp which I have reservation for. <laughs> but you guys know which camp I have reservation for. The hobo camp. <laughs> the space in the dunes where nobody sees. <laughs> oh, that's cool. You don't need tires. Hello, marhaba. Wow, he had a steel, what do you call it? Like the old horse carts had the steel ring around the tire. That's why he was able to, to skid over the tarmac. <laughs> Yeah, so I won't report to anybody, I guess, because my reservation is very special reservation. He won't be able to drive me there. It's only myself who can go there. <laughs> Hopefully that should be okay. And yeah, I'll do my best, of course, not to disturb anybody or not to um, infringe on anybody's property or privacy or whatever unless what I'm doing already could be considered infringing hopefully not if yes then ah, then I'll just ignore it <laughs> because I do want to show you friends this thing oh and there's a pump so obviously there's a borehole there, where the pipe goes into the sand. Okay, so that works nicely. Look at this, my friends. It almost looks like some Mayan pyramid, and even more that one. But that's somebody's date palm grove. 
is it? Or something else? It looks like they're planted in the rows and it's on the premium uh, oasis land so I guess they should be for eating not just for good looks probably they're producing dates what a cool place how not to like it life is good <laughs> despite everything what's going on in my business right now i'm kind of thinking maybe god just decided to save me from and and from useless stress so that it all happened exactly now it's weekend in europe not here <laughs> here it's different days friday is the big day off not sunday so it's Saturday morning and I'll be Saturday, Sunday in here. So yeah, nothing I can do anyway. And uh, <laughs> to not think about the situation too much. I'll be just having a fantastic time here. I am already. How not to like it. What a cool place. I'm grateful that I decided to go here, not to leave it out. Hello. Is that Hello. I think he was asking for money, but I'm not sure. It sounds something like money, and then something in Arabic, and then how much? <laughs> salam. Hello, Salam. Good, good. How are you? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Oh, there are some nice houses as well. Look at these trends. Look who's there. <laughs> cool. Imagine these black goats when they have to survive the summer heat on the black coat. I'm cooking here in January, let alone what's happening in summer here. That's crazy. Here are more goats. And sheep. This looks like a sheep. And that one. But the others look like goats to me. And yeah, one more difference between camels on one hand and goats and sheep on the other hand is how they eat. The camels are amazingly programmed to be very considerate about plants. They never eat the whole plant. They take a little bit and they go further to look for more. Because in that way plants will survive and grow new shoots while sheep and goat they just graze everything if there is anything edible they will eat it and leave nothing behind them in our northern european climates it's okay because you can't kill grass that way you can uh, eat forever but grass will grow back and it's plenty of grass but it's not the same story here here, if you eat the whole bush completely, leaving nothing, it will die. While camel, he is amazingly programmed that he will pick a couple branches, couple leaves and leave the rest and will wander further in the desert to look for another bush 
to pick a couple of branches off so that these bushes keep growing they're just pruned they're not killed so yeah that's another reason to admire camels so much in this climate I am slowly approaching the place where the civilized village ends and the proper desert starts <laughs> you can play games in the wall as well if you have a chalk <laughs> and these plants these closest here uh, I'm pretty sure they are the ones which are poisoned from the leaves they look exactly uh, the Latin name is Euphorbia Euphorbia but uh, I don't know the species names the specific name just the genus name because there are many different kinds but they're all poisonous and if I understand correctly you can even get blind if you get that juice in your eye ah there is one cool thing happening I don't know can I show you there's one jeep trying to get up the dune and couldn't crazy people having fun <laughs> this place is amazing Uh, that's the drinking water tap the communal one with a filter oh that's cool I have enough water but in case I need more I know where to go that's the cool stuff who would think that they would have free drinking water dispenser here so friends no tarmac from this point on for however long you would want to wander, you wouldn't see anything more. Like any roads more. This is the last the tarmac finished there. Salam. Yeah, they have a lot of Indian, Pakistani and Bangladeshi workers here loads of loads of them and even when I was looking for that bus station I, I was wandering through the huge huge bus yard uh, <laughs> through their petrol station and all, all kind of inner places which I shouldn't be probably going into but I couldn't find the bus station and everybody inside spoke only Bangladeshi, Bangla, Bangla, the language. They were from Bangladesh. Salam alaikum, Cave Halik, Alhamdulillah. Well, sometimes I can make the whole conversation in Arabic, <laughs> but only when that consists of peace be with you which is hello how are you and praise to God which is all good <laughs> salam salam ah shwaya shwaya sorry Uh, just walking to the desert. <laughs> shukran, shukran. <laughs> How are yourselves? All good? Uh, can you say in English? Sorry? I uh, just walked to the desert and back. Uh, in the desert. One night and then back tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I have. Good. <laughs> shukran, shukran. <laughs> Sorry? Ah, Ismak, name? Uh, Artis. My name is Artis. Where and? Your name is Muhammad. Muhammad, okay. Abudi, Shagran. Abudi. Shagran. Shagran. Fad. Fad? Farenzi. Farenzi. Yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. 
Latvija, Europe. <laughs> šukren, šukren. Have a good day, bye bye. That's the local mosque. Yeah, there were some cool local dudes who just wanted to have a chat with somebody from outside and just wanted to welcome me to Oman. They didn't try to sell me anything, they didn't try to get money from me, they didn't try anything. Just to, to smile and say hello and ask which country I'm from and what's my name and what's their names and welcome to Oman. What a nice country. I read an airport in uh, Muscat airport. They had a huge quotation on the wall where Muhammad once had said that if you come to Oman they will never embarrass you and never mistreat you. I forgot the exact wording but something of that sort. So that Oman is a very nice place and welcoming. That was the main idea. So the old Muhammad said it already and it hasn't changed. It's still nice, welcoming and wonderful country. What do you think? <laughs> That's at least my impressions this far. Now these are the last houses. From the satellite imagery it looked to me that many of the houses are abundant because the yards were half filled with sand and so on. But it doesn't seem to be the case. Nothing seems to be abandoned here. Everything seems to be inhabited and in good condition. So my idea about sleeping into some abandoned yard will probably have to be discarded. <laughs> there are no such thing. And these are the last houses. Maybe a few, few of them there. But basically, further there are only camps for tourists. The outrageously expensive ones, which I was looking and, and saying, thank you, but no thank you. I'm not your kind of guest. <laughs> I'll be looking for some sand dune with soft sand where to sleep. And look at this, friends. They have even one more water point at the very verge of the village. And does it have water? Yes, it does. Well, that's amazing. I'll drink a bit and I'll continue on. Wow, the water was actually surprisingly tasty, really tasty. Huh, <laughs> I would like to live here. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. But there is something pleasant about the desert and the sand. I never thought it could be the case. Because I like plants, I like trees. I feel good in the forest, that kind of situation. I like waters, rivers, lakes, seas. I like sailing. Like I never thought I might be a desert person. Never. But there is something ingrained in our DNA, I think, which makes us feel good in desert. I don't know. Have you experienced the same, my friends? Those who have been in desert. But like proper contact with nature, not just some touristy things. Have you experienced the same feeling? Or is it just me? As I told you in that Wadi Rum desert, it feels the same as you feel at the sandy beach. That's why so many people like to go to the beach to have a rest, because there is this nice sandy beach and sunshine and everything. Basically, everything what we have here, except the sea itself. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, friends, if you look that direction, there is still some civilization. But if you look on the direction where we are going, well, except that electricity line which feeds that cell tower and the couple paddocks there, there is nothing of civilization at all. Well, it looks to me that here might be a good place where I could climb that dune without disturbing anybody. What do you think? You see that jeep going uphill? Wow, look at this. Behind this, <laughs> what do you call it, like a dam, like a sand fence, there's another paddock with camel in it. And from there, I didn't see it at all. It was behind that dune. And it's interesting, I was observing on the satellite imagery yesterday that the whole area consists of these, like a windrows, how do you call them? Like the dams of sand, which are going almost north-south direction. Not exactly, maybe a little bit southeast, south southeast, something. Probably it has something to do with the prevailing winds here, how they were formed. Because it, it is the same in a huge, huge expanse of the desert towards that direction where I'm pointing now. And you see, there is another, and another new things which are revealed when we passed it. We didn't see these things from down there, from back there. Unfortunately, a lot of plastic as well. Unfortunately, where our tourists is garbage. And probably not only tourists only. Many people do it. Wow, this place is amazing. What do you think, friends? I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm properly impressed. For a Latvian, who has lived all my life in Latvia except the last 10 years in Ireland, which is even greener. <laughs> this is something crazy to have such sand dunes. When I was in Mapalomas in Canary Island, Gran Canaria, there is some place near beach which is also consisting of only sand dunes. But this is a small place. When I went there, it was cool. It was interesting to see those sand mountains and dunes without anything else. But it was a small thing. Like here, this is huge. You can take a camel and walk for weeks probably until you'll be across this area. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> wow, and that's the village there. And somebody's hut here. <laughs> well, I just decided to walk barefoot here because sand seems to be very clean. I don't see any of those prickly seed stuff plants. And it is actually crazy hot. It's hot to, to be here. I'm sweating all the time. But also, the sand is hot. It's bearable, but it's hot. And by the way, <laughs> you see these marks? What do you call them? <laughs> the red dots. <laughs> That's the legacy. <laughs> from that day when I was my 
uh, not the last night but before that when I was hobo sleeping in that hammock in the tree before I discovered that these are mosquitoes <laughs> they did this to me <laughs> crazy and this was a very short moment like 15 minutes maybe after that I got a proper thick socks and I was never bothered by them after that Wow, this is some place, my friends. <laughs> Camels were here. And you see, behind this is a whole big pit. Wow, wow, friends. This is some place. Ah, uh, you have to see it. It will be nothing like that on the on the screen you have to see this vast expanse and the dunes 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 amazing it feels like the top of that dune is a little bit harder easier to walk so i'll try to walk along the top of that Yeah, I never quite realized that if you travel through a desert with such dunes they're so high and there is a lot and a lot of climbing I was kind of imagining that you just walk along sand but you see, these are proper mountains if you go down there and you climb up there again it's a huge work and you won't be going in a straight line you'll be going like that like that and there probably will be the next dip wow i can understand how hard it is to travel with camels in these places and it is hot it is hot my friends ah you see the oasis there you can see the oasis and that bit, closest bit of the village and we are now in properly in the desert it is so hot and the sand is hot in some places where it's more exposed to the sun, the angle it's even almost burning my skin and this is mid-January, end of January wow <laughs> what goes on here during July, August I can't imagine how can you survive that heat and now even it it feels unthinkable that in a few hours time I will be freezing uh, because during night will be eight or nine degrees it doesn't feel it's possible like it's it's like a frying pan <laughs> how can you freeze here but yeah, we'll see. I'll let you know how it <laughs> how it goes. These are my footsteps, footprints. Yeah, amazing place. Wow, these things are so steep. <laughs> Going down there was quite easy. I was almost surfing. But getting up here, you see the whole disturbance of the sand which I made. It was crazy your feet are digging into the sand and you're climbing 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 but you're getting nowhere <laughs> ah, at the end I was almost running ah, and I got up here and this is not even the highest of all the places <laughs> is it some desert ant? I oh, know it's just remains of some plant Oh. Wow. <laughs> oh, guys. I can't imagine those Bedou people who was or still are traveling for miles and miles in these kind of deserts. That's amazing. That's unthinkable how difficult it is. 
crazy and it is as steep as it can be because whatever would be steeper sand is sliding down so it is literally as steep as the sand can stand wow <laughs> and when you try to climb there let's try without surfing down there but literally you see the sand is flowing down if I disturb it it's still flowing like a river and if you want to climb there you disturb that place and the whole thing slides down together with you <laughs> that's crazy I kind of have heard about these things a little very little I'm very far from anything desert in my life I have been but when you experience it it's something different <laughs> it's something unbelievable ah oh, friends another climb <sighs> the previous clip was somewhere there and then I walked around here Ooh, that's crazy like walking that distance on an even surface would be nothing I wouldn't notice it while talking with you friends but here and in some places where it was more angle against the sun towards the south it was almost scorchingly hot I almost burned my feet well not exactly burned I would be putting my crocs back on but if it would be too bad but it was very close to it it was very hot and it looks like there are more dips before I reach the top <laughs> this is crazy what a place my friends amazing <laughs> but I like it it's crazy but I like it you know what my friends <laughs> and by the way you can see uh, I don't know if you can I don't see in my screen myself so well you can see one top there where my footsteps are then the second top there then the third top closer here and now we are on the fourth and initially I thought when I was there in the village I thought well I maybe will not go too far in the desert because I have to go back anyway what's the point I just spend time there instead of getting from A to B I'll just go up to the top of that dune hill and to look on all directions from it to see how it looks like but friends the one I saw was some second or third from there <laughs> and it's more and more and more and now again more and probably behind those ones are five more <laughs> which are still higher ah it never ends <laughs> that's crazy the jeeps running through the desert between the camps feeding and and entertaining tourists it's expensive place to be in as a tourist I mean for me it was just something like nine euros return ticket for a bus from Muscat to here and back and that's it so that's where I came from and that's my next stop and look what I found there was somebody's camp here I think some pieces of irrigation drip lines I don't think they were irrigating something here although who knows there is some fence post as well a little bit more growth 
But when I stepped on this thing, it was like a frying pan. That was hot, man. <laughs> because it's black. Crazy place. But amazing. Let's see. One more. Shall we do one more? And then see from there what we can see and decide. I'm not inclined to do ten more. <laughs> So friends, that's the village and the oasis down there and that's the place where we just were with this board. Oh, when the wind, wind picks up it hits sand against, you see? It was a short slight dust uh, gust and it made sand hitting in my in my back of the head wow when it's a sandstorm and properly hot when scorchingly hot sand particles are hitting your face like a sand blaster yeah that's what now it it makes more sense what I read about camels and their eyebrows and all that stuff how good they are against the sandstorms so yeah you can see where I went around there and back here that was the easiest here it would be impossible probably that was the less steepest climb but now friends I can't understand properly is this the last one or oh, there are more now it looks like there are more <laughs> i was thinking it's if it's the last one it would be worth getting up there to see on all directions but i guess it won't be much different than towards there except there are a few houses here and there scattered and that direction would be nothing but i don't know I might have a meal here, it's a nice place. You see this big pit? <laughs> I don't see even the bottom, only now we can see it. It's amazing these formations of the sand. Crazy stuff. Yeah, I'll have a meal, I'll have a rest. And I'll think, maybe I go to the next one, one more. <laughs> but I don't think there will be anything more than this one more. Because it can be 15 more until I'm on the very top. Who knows? <laughs> ah, there's somebody walking there. Like me. Yeah, two persons. Yeah, friends. What do we have here? Besides the liquids, what do I have? I have one very nice Kenyan avocado from Kenya. Well, not extremely nice but definitely nicer than anything you can get in Europe. I have tried it, I know. <laughs> then a good bunch of mandarins. Then different variety of mandarins, just to compare. And then this is my emergency pack. How do you call it? One kilo of dates. They keep long. They don't wait. Well, it's one kilo, but it's a lot of calories and a lot of food in them so I could survive probably I don't know one or two days just from them if I didn't have anything but I have these guys so I'll be good plus I have four liters of drinkable stuff so all good
I wonder if I can show you friends how my picture changes depending from where I go up and down it doesn't show as extreme on the screen yeah these tops are definitely the best for walking the hardest and the windward side of the top not the leeward side that seems to be the best for walking from my very short experience <laughs> probably you are laughing now the ones who are experienced with desert <laughs> you see it's a different picture now yeah and this different color there are different fractions of the sand these darker red are bigger grains while the lighter finer grains are sifted away by the wind and these darker ones are the bigger grains which are left from the small wavelets of the sand it is very much like a sea with all the waves in all kinds of directions and you can see the wind directions in history the only difference is that water waves move all the time these things move very slowly when the wind blows that sand yeah quite an amazing place so what do you think my friends shall we go one more i definitely can see there is more than that one shall we climb one more or shall we finally stop maybe one more and then we'll see who knows maybe i'll come back and and here is a better place we'll see i just noticed one thing you can see where the landslides were happening <laughs> the sand slides should i say I didn't notice that distinct ridge on the previous ridges could it be really that it's the highest one with the strongest wind on it I'm getting quite curious yeah I definitely want to get up and see no of course not this is the ridge and there is the next one <laughs> and who knows how many more I don't think I'll try to go one more again unless I get a good rest and by the evening when it gets cooler I feel like I would like to walk a little bit more but yeah it is so beautiful it's amazing how high these dunes can build up it's really amazing i wonder how these houses there on the dune side could they be buried one day it probably happens very very slow but i could well imagine that it's possible that this huge wave of the desert sea can slowly slowly but cover those houses but probably they know where to build they know the prevailing wind directions and so on it is so quiet here you don't hear almost anything 
some flies here or there but complete peace and quiet what a place what a place my friends wow so amazing I'm so grateful to be here you know what I like here it's funny, a headscarf. <laughs> I have the Galabea and it really works amazing, especially when I don't have any pocket belt on or anything else on. Just pure Galabea and nothing, nothing, nothing else, nothing under, nothing. It is so much easier to bear the heat. Huge difference. Like you're literally like standing naked in the uh, shade of the white galabea and it is so much easier than sit standing on the sun <laughs> on european clothes huge difference huge i can really feel it so that's one good thing but i still miss a headscarf i always thought why do you need a headscarf I'm not trying to pretend to be an Arab when everybody understands anyway that I'm not one. <laughs> but in this desert situation, the headscarf is a really good thing. Because the sand is getting blown into your eyes, into your ears, your mouth and nose. And it's difficult, that sand is everywhere. And it's hitting. Like now it's a very, very pleasant weather but if it's any wind the sand picks up and hits in your face like a sand blaster and uh, yeah you definitely want something to wrap, wrap around your head especially around your ears mo mouth no nose so you can breathe through the fabric but not breathe in that sand which is flying so i can really understand now it is not just a fashion or style or something that Arabs have that dress, dress code, whatever you call it. It's purely, really practical thing to have in these conditions. Of course, if you live in a city, you don't care. But if you travel in these kind of areas, on the sand dunes, in any place where the sand storm could occur, even in cities, I think. That's amazingly useful thing to have around your head. <laughs> and you can wrap it in all kinds of different ways, depending on situation. So yeah, there is a reason why they're dressing like they're dressing. It's not just weird style, as we Europeans tend to think. It's a real, useful, pragmatical, practical, thing to have. <laughs> That's my shade. And you see the sand is all, uh, even picking up here, although the wind is not strong at all. Yeah, that flow was because of me. Shall we look how it happens? You see? It keeps flowing like a river, like a water. <laughs> amazing place and this is again guys it is something which you have to experience no photos no videos no descriptions nothing will give you that you just have to come and be here come and try to climb few of these dunes to feel how it is you're such a small creature, like an ant, in this vast, big nature. But amazing nature. <laughs> yeah, that's where I climbed up, by the way. <laughs> ah, you can see my steps there. I don't see it on my screen quite well, but I hope I'm pointing in the right direction. That's how I came here. I was having a small rest here. 
Ah, no, the wind came a little bit. <laughs> I was about to say when I woke up, this is all I see around me. Nothing else. And that's the place where I came. And complete, complete peace and calmness. Nothing. <laughs> it's so amazing. After all the city life. Such a peace. Amazing. Hey friends. Happy days. My curiosity got rewarded. <laughs> I left my... I don't see in the screen. I think it's there. It's very bright sunshine and yeah, it is there. My screen is not bright enough. So I left my belongings there and according to satellite I came 110 meters from there all over to here and look what I found <laughs> I am almost on top like that one is a bit bigger but even you see there we can see between those hills the dunes we can see the long distance dunes which goes into oblivion into nowhere <laughs> and on that side you can clearly see horizon very far so I am almost on the very top and that's the Bidia, the city, that's the oasis and the village in oasis and a little bit out of oasis as well. <clears throat> There's some lorry coming and those, all of those things scattered, can I show you a bit more? They are all camps for tourists as far as I understand. Well, some of them closer to village might be just some camel place or whatever, but further there, they're all tourist stuff, camps for tourists, quite many of them. So basically what they do is that when tourists come in, they meet them somewhere there and take with their jeeps into their camps, many camps there, many businesses, and basically they got experience of how it is to be in desert even though it is very close to the civilization it is still outside and in the desert and it's reachable by jeep i'm not sure if they could get jeeps in here i doubt it they're too crazy uh, like the jeep would just dig in into this sand because it's difficult to walk up let alone drive when the sand is flowing look at this edge cool what a place my friends I could theoretically walk even there to that peak to view the sunset when it will come it will not be as hot by then as well because it is from here well in that case I would pick my things just in case because I have everything there even my money and passport and everything besides my phone <laughs> so I wouldn't leave them here I see what's going on and, and there is no people around there are no people around but if I would walk there, I'd probably take everything with me. So I'd go back one ridge. Then it would be one, two. And it might be the third one. Or it might be one in between them. Not sure. 
and I'm pretty sure that must be the highest because between them we can see already the vast horizon what a place my friends ah I like it and while it is still light well there still will be light for some three hours maybe but while it's light I need to explore a good place for a night's sleep I want a place which was exposed to the sunlight as much as possible so that the sand is hot initially it will be too hot but it will cool down and then it will be my savor during the night I think and that's one and I want also to be not on the very top because that would be too windy uh, and that would cool me down uh, during night it will be a problem because it will be cold and I don't want also in the very pit in the valley because at least according to the knowledge of apple growing these are what we call frost pockets because when the air is getting cold it is sliding down like water pouring down from the hill and wherever it's a pit the cold air accumulates and that becomes a frost pocket let's say if you tr if you plant apple trees you wouldn't plant in the pocket you wouldn't plant at the top as well but somewhere in the middle and south facing so that there's more sunlight but that's for northern climates only <laughs> not here <laughs> But here will be the same in terms that I want that sand to be hot and uh, to be an accumulator for heat which would hopefully get me through the night without freezing and and yeah so that the, when the air gets cooled it flows down and accumulates there but I'm not sleeping there I'm sleeping somewhere halfway in that's my kind of logic huh I can actually <laughs> I can actually <laughs> oh, this is funny <laughs> I was almost sliding there surfing skiing almost not exactly so yeah what I was about to say that that's my logic inexperienced logic uh, how I'm reasoning about where to find a night's sleep and maybe I'll probably put on everything I have at all and probably I might even dig into sand a little bit if it's too cold still because sand I hope should retain some heat for some while We'll see, we'll see. Maybe it won't be that bad even. But I have to be ready because it was predict predicted initially 8 degrees, then 9 degrees. Who knows how it will be in reality. During night, I mean. Okay, my friends. And these things are a little bit prickly. Uh, some of these camel snacks. <laughs> the things which camels eat I was watching them eating these things in Jordan uh, sometimes they are prickly yeah I just stepped on one this thing I, uh, I got that prickle in my skin and I had to take it out it's not deep nothing really big but still have to be careful but that's only on the valleys where where the course of sand is and where some things sometimes grow on the top of dunes it's absolutely nothing just pure sand pure Baltic Sea beach sand like this thing if I showed you only this thing I could easily tell you that I'm on the coast of Baltic Sea somewhere in Jurmala would be no different at all except when I pan around and show you this then you wouldn't believe it anymore <laughs> oh. I'm 
amazing place. Well friends, I almost cooked my mandarins. <laughs> I was I closed my bag, the plastic bag, uh, because I didn't want sand to get into it. Because you see everything is covering with sand quite quickly. And when the wind is blowing even a little bit. And I closed the bag and I opened and it was like an uh, oven when you open it, the bread cooking oven, <laughs> baking. <laughs> well, not exactly, but it was a little bit smelly air already. And mandarins do like to breathe. They want to breathe. Otherwise they go bad very quickly. So I, I now opened both inner bags and the outer bag and I closed it because I thought the white plastic doesn't heat up usually. At least that's from my polytunnel experience in growing. <laughs> when you have clear plastic uh, for the glass house, not glass, polytunnel, yeah, <laughs> greenhouse, uh, the polytunnel heats up like crazy as soon as there are some sun rays heating it but when you have uh, white plastic on the polytunnel it doesn't heat up uh, it's useful for propagation in nursery and so on so because of that I was thinking it should be all good it's not clear I would never leave this thing uh, in the Sun I know it will be immediately cooking <laughs> but uh, if there is no escape like here but even now, the sun is hitting the white plastic, uh, not directly inside of the clear plastic. So, and, and there are like chimneys where the heat is escaping, so it should be all good now. But yeah, even through white plastic, it got really hot and soggy kind of because of the mandarins inside. I just came here where I can see the village and all the jeeps which are playing around with tourists on the dunes. And here, yeah, as the shadows grow longer and longer and sun is getting lower and lower. I'm just laying down here, watching enjoying the nature oh some bird came <laughs> very near yeah it is such a beautiful place so unusual and interesting and cool to be here and so peaceful. Amazing. I really do recommend you, friends, if you have a possibility, come to a place like this. It is some experience which you can't really find anywhere else. It's even difficult for me to describe it. Something very deep. Amazing. And it isn't hot anymore. Where my naked feet, bare feet, that's the word, yeah? <laughs> is in the shadow it almost kind of feels a little bit cool so <laughs> oh yeah the night will probably be interesting <laughs> i can imagine it can drop really low the temperatures and the sand is getting cold quite quite quickly So I guess it probably won't retain too much heat for me. <laughs> Unless I dig very deep, I don't know. I doubt, still. 
So yeah, friends, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. In the very worst case, I have my raincoat, which I made from the survival bag. You know that thing which with this uh, um, aluminum foil looking surface? which re uh, retains the body heat, uh, reflects it back. It is very nasty in terms of condensation. It's not comfortable and usable normally. But if it gets really cold, and especially windy, that might be something to use in that case. We'll see, we'll see, friends. Before my own shadow, was here now it is there <laughs> shadows growing longer and longer oh friend that was a steep climb <laughs> uh, i came from there i don't have any free hand to show you, but maybe you see my trail. And that will be the very top. Well, top of this range. And there's quite a wind, quite a bit wind here. Because we are on the rooftop. You see how far we can see on all directions. Amazing place. <laughs> but that one there is even higher. It goes between me and horizon. But that is like one, two, three ridges away from me. Well, I, this first one I could not count. I could go just there. And then I have to cross that one. I could cross it there actually quite easily. What do you think? It's not so hot anymore. Maybe I can go there. <laughs> My curiosity is sometimes outside of any bounds or limits. <laughs> I literally, well, not here anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's again uh, stronger. But before there, it was a very soft spot. You literally disappear above your ankle. Sand. But if we walk on these backs, the tops of the ridges, usually they are reasonably hard. So you still go in like this into sand, but you can walk. You are not digging in. Now then, I have walked a bit. What will be easier to get there? That's the top I need to reach. Or will it be easier to go around there? That's a bit steep there as well. So I'll probably go just here. It will be a little bit of digging here. It still flows after me. It wasn't. It wasn't that bad. We got through quite easily. Okay, and here's a better again. And that one should be the biggest one, the highest one. Or behind that, we'll have even higher something. What do you think, friends? Can you guess? I can't. <laughs>
just have to go and see, but I have a suspicion that it might be the highest in the area. Yeah, I think it will be highest. Cool. Let's try to walk on that reasonably harder ridge. on the screen how it's go oh <laughs> oh friends it is the highest <laughs> I can see horizon all over around me wow and this side where the sun was still shining it's quite hot that side was cool almost cold already and that's only a few hours well, during night it will drop probably seriously. Wow, friends, this is some place. This definitely is the highest. And behind there I can see one other camp. And there's, that's another valley already. So this is the top of the top. Wow. And it wasn't that difficult actually. I wasn't very far. I can put down my things and show you actually. You see? That's my feet. Footsteps. That was the previous place which I thought is the highest, but no. This one was higher. Look at this. Well, there isn't exactly horizon, but not far from it. But there is just pure horizon. And I can even see there's the first valley and then there's the second valley and after that is the third range or how do you call it? But I, I mean range as this one from here to there with all these small ranges in them, in it. And there we can see some other city. I think it could be Vasil. Vasil or something with K. Forgot what was it? Something K. K. No, don't remember. Some other place. And that one is our city. Bidia. Wow, this is some place. Well, that's definitely a good place for a sunset, what do you think? <laughs> sunset will be where? Somewhere there, probably. But I need to find, before I enjoy sunset, <laughs> I need to find where would be a good spot for sleep. Some place which was facing the sun the latest, so some southwest or west facing slope like this one. But this will be very windy, it is quite a lot of wind. Can you hear me even? I should check maybe and then film further. Well, friends, the wind is picking up quite a bit during sunset. Not very strong yet, but it was quite a good amount of sand flying. Do you see this? It happened without me helping it. It was just what wind brought. And uh, yeah, I think it is very similar experience to sea. In the sea. I have sometimes noticed the same feeling. The sun is setting and the wind is picking up. And I almost at one moment had that instinct that, oh, I have to reef the sail. <laughs> because it will be getting dark soon and the reefing will be a lot more difficult. And if I have too much sail up and wind is picking up, it won't be good. 
<laughs> so I got that urge, I need to reef sail, and then I noticed, ah, ah, I'm not at the sea, <laughs> I'm at the sea of sand, and without even the ship of the desert, the camel. <laughs> I'm just alone here. But it is beautiful, it is beautiful, and this is the highest point, <laughs> that's crazy. I didn't even expect it seriously to reach it. I thought it'll just come a little bit. But after I had that rest and it got cooler as well, the sun was lower. So I felt like, oh, okay, I can go actually. It's, it's good enough. I'm not that tired anymore. And here we are, friends. Isn't this amazing? A little bit sand flying. Yeah, on that valley down there, you see we can see some trees growing even, and some other camp. But that's quite far. We won't be going there for sure. I wonder what I will be doing tomorrow, but tomorrow will show, depending what I feel, how cold I am or how good I am. But I might be just going back where I came and then through the village. Or another possibility is to just go if I have more energy and willingness. I could just be going there along these ridges and get out in that field where we saw the first camels when coming here. The sun is still not completely down. It already feels cold in my Galabay only. I might be choosing maybe that spot. It, it was soft sand so it will be pleasant sleeping. It was reasonably long in the sunshine, although this thing was hiding it at the last hour or two. And there is more uh, place where the cold air could go, frost pockets, so to say. But that place will be in the lee of this ridge. So I hope that there will not be wind. If there will still be wind, I might go around uh, again uh, behind that other one, or even that one. But I think wind protection is even more priority than all the other things. Maybe it will die down and, and during night it will be complete calm, but how can you know? Let's better choose a place where I'm okay even when the wind is big. And also I don't want uh, all the time that sand is flying on me. Well, it kind of is anyway. You see. <laughs> Not much you can do about it. I will be simply uh, getting into all my layers and putting this, this Galabea as my top layer. So, I think it should be all right. You see how quickly sun is going down? Or am I just talking so slowly? <laughs> what do you think? Am I really that slow? <laughs> there was a joke about this. Uh, the way how Russians laugh about Latvians, about us. <laughs> In Latvian language, we, when we want to say sunrise, well, I should start with other. In Russian language, sun rising means sun is creeping up. Would that be a proper translation? We pause it. Sun is kind of slowly creeping up, uh, climbing up. That kind of term the Russians use for sun sunrise. But in Latvian, <laughs> I don't know why, but it is so that in Latvian language we say Saul Oh, 
it disappeared. It was quick. We say Saolalats, which means sun is jumping up. <laughs> and uh, the way how Russians are laughing about Latvians, those who know this language peculiarities, they say how slow must be Latvians that this process when the sun is slowly climbing up they are calling that sun is jumping up <laughs> they must be very slow these Latvians if they say sun is jumping up <laughs> so yeah now I was wondering how quickly sun was jumping down <laughs> well uh, for sunset we don't use the same jumping term even as Latvians, don't worry <laughs> but yeah, I kind of felt that it was so quick I was just finishing a couple sentences and you see, you see, there's no sun anymore okay friends, before it's getting too dark I don't think we'll get any magnif magnificent views anymore it's getting too dark. Let's go there and see the place for my camping spot for this night. Yeah, here is still wind. No good. Let's walk further. Here is better, but still wind. If it picks up, it would, wouldn't be good even here. That would be probably very good for the wind. But that's, I think, definitely a frost pocket, if there is such a thing in desert. Well, not frost in terms of real below zero freezing, but cold, cold air pocket. This was the place which I was telling you about. But no, it's too exposed, it's still too much wind. Let's go behind this ridge. So I'll have two ridges between me and the, the wind direction. Of course, I don't know if the wind will not change its direction after sunset. That can happen as well. But we can't predict everything. We'll just do what seems reasonable enough. actually feels almost quite good. Maybe let's check that other one. That one. That looks even more protected from the wind direction. So there are a couple ridges on that side, the big ones, and here will be one very close. This will be a cold spot, I think. I feel already on my feet it's cold. Because this is the lowest. That one was a little bit higher up. I think that will be better. Yeah, this is shallower. A lot less terrain. Uh, how do you call it? The water catchment area is very small here. The cold air catchment area is very small here and it goes down there. For that it's a lot bigger and it felt colder as well already. Yeah. I think that's it. How does it feel here? Yeah, there is some wind. It's 
not really that protected. Let's look. Oh. <laughs> I'm not very used in <laughs> running in Galadea <laughs> uphill through the sand. I got tangled. Huh. Would that be better, bet maybe? Maybe I'm too picky. It won't be ideal anyway. I'm just thinking if I have such a big choice between uh, hotels, <laughs> Hobo hotels, why should I not choose the best? These are somebody's footprint here. I wonder who that somebody was. I bet he spoke Latvian. because it was against it was in shadow in shade Maybe this one is good I'll think about it yeah I was walking around and looking so I will stay in the same spot I was looking that spot was kind of good but a bit colder and I was looking on that place it also kind of drains there, but very lightly only. And it felt like it will be quite cold there. It's a quite a big catchment area of the cold air. So this I think will be better, all the cold air will go down there. If I'm right in my thinking, it should be. I can't imagine it would be very different here from what it is in my northern orchard. But uh, it is kind of tricky thing because those places who are protected from wind are also the ones which were shaded for a long time. So the sand is not so hot, not so warm. Because the wind is coming pretty much exactly from the direction where the sun was setting. A little bit maybe towards the south from the west. But yeah, I'll stay here. So, let's get all my thick clothing on and Galabea on top of that all. So friends, it probably is too dark for you to see anything except that contour of that dune. But I have now everything on me, all the layers. And I remember from reading cold weather manual from US Army that more thin layers are more efficient than one thick layer because the thin layers trap a lot of air between them and I have very many thin layers now and also I stretched out my hammock yeah do you don't see it maybe I'll show you in the morning I stretched out my hammock and covered myself with it just in case there is any dew, I don't know. Is there such a thing here? We'll see. The only thing which I don't have on me is the thinnest of my long sleeve t-shirts. And that one I will now wrap around my face. Uh, wind died down completely now. Completely no wind at the moment, but I don't know what will be later. 
So just in case there is a lot of wind, I don't want to wake up or, or mosquitoes maybe as well. Uh, I just want to be covered from sand and mosquitoes around my face as well. So yeah, friends, now I am warm and cozy, but it is getting colder and colder quite quickly. So we'll see how things go during night. Ah, actually, can I switch on light? Yes, I can. You see, that's my galabea. And this is my hammock. And there are my other stuff. Everything with dust and sand already. <laughs> As expected, of course. See you in the morning, friends. Hopefully. <laughs>